consider that explosion in numbers, that steady rise, record rises, day after day, that is, of course, another massive strain on a, on a system that has already been pushed and tested to the limit. We're expecting another stimulus package to be announced by Italian authorities, and in particular, a massive injection of cash into that system, which has been holding uh, in a way that is almost remarkable. The picture has become a symbol in Italy of a system in the north of the country that is stretched to its limit. Hospital workers, nurses, doctors, the heroes of the fight against coronavirus themselves near breaking point. We are united and we will fight this forsaken virus. At a hospital in Milan, hallways and offices have been turned into makeshift intensive care units. In Brescia, tents are used to treat the sick, Rome too beefing up its capacity. When he locked down the country, the Prime Minister explained. We live in a system in which we guarantee health and the right of everyone to be cured. Italy's healthcare system is facing a challenge like no other. By its nature, this is an epidemic that spikes quickly and in clusters requiring urgent and expensive treatment for some. So far, the system here has delivered free tests, intensive care, emergency treatment, all free of charge. So is Europe's often criticized public health system now showing its true strength? Once you get an x-ray, somebody wants to get treatment, they can wait weeks or months for an appointment. That's the inefficiency of national health. But the plus side is that at a time of crisis, the tests for coronavirus are free for everybody. They take care of all their citizens, and there's no worrying about insurance. So how does Italy's system stack up against America's private, profit-driven healthcare system? First, on capacity. As the crisis hits, the United States has 2.8 hospital beds per 1,000 people, fewer than Italy's 3.2 beds per 1,000 people, according to the OECD. Then, once the outbreak begins, there's a question of the response. And here, the more fragmented American model could make coordination harder. To deal with an epidemic which affects the population globally, the response must be centralized. There must be one crisis unit that gives a unanimous response. As infections continue to rise here at record daily rates, Italy is a country where everyone fears getting the virus, but no one need worry about being treated for it. Now, even if you leave moral considerations aside, in an outbreak like this, it is, of course, in everybody's interest that everyone can get tested, everyone can be treated. But, of course, no system has infinite resources. And what doctors here are warning is that even if they're not going to be obliged to make differences between patients based on their ability to pay, they might start having to make differences between them based on their chances of survival, just given the sheer numbers, Alice. Consider that explosion in numbers, that steady rise, record rises, day after day, that is, of course, another massive strain on a, on a system that has already been pushed and tested to the limit. We're expecting another stimulus package to be announced by Italian authorities, and in particular, a massive injection of cash into that system, which has been